bör också klicka på captions för norska undertexter. Hola, ¿cómo están? Bienvenidos al canal de Team Baxea, ahora con sus títulos en español. Vi har nu undertext på svenska. Klicka på sluten bildtext och väl svenska. Voor Nederlandse ondertiteling, klik op de drie puntjes bovenin, dan op ondertiteling en vervolgens op Nederlands. Hello and welcome from my home today. That's right, after 14 weeks, 98 days, going from tug to tug, I finally got off the boat and got home. Anyway, as you can see, I'm in my beautiful house here, and as hopefully you'll notice, I got my hair cut. Oh, I feel so much better to get the hair cut finally. Anyway, loving it here in beautiful Rhode Island. It's very nice out. Um, I had put out to my patrons, people on my Patreon channel, uh, Patreon account, Patreon account, I put to my patrons, I keep getting those confused, uh, I, they sent, uh, a few of them sent me some video of them asking questions, and I thought I'd share that with you guys. So, these are people that if, if you like the channel, like what we're doing, love that you watch, love that you like the channel, love that you subscribe, maybe even hit that bell, all those things help out the channel. If you want to do more, there's a... You go to patreon.com, search for Tim B at Sea, and for as little as $2 a month, you can be on board with us and help with getting better equipment and doing that sort of thing. So hopefully we'll continue to grow the channel. But these are just a few questions from a few of my patrons. All right, thank you again. Oh, and one more thing. I'm this close. I've got a, an online store up from Teespring that's connected to... YouTube and YouTube has to just uh, verify or uh, approve the thing or whatever. So anyway, we have an online store. If you want t-shirts and coffee cups and tank tops and sweatshirts and all that good stuff, I, it's going to be available real soon. So hang in there. All right, cool. Let's go to the first uh, video. Hey, Tim. What's the difference between the tugboats that do barge work and the tugboats that do ship work? Thank you. That was my buddy David Kapler. David Kapler is the he he's a, a ex uh, I think he's retired now an ex uh, merchant mariner. He also is this amazing photographer that does the New Jersey ship spotting. Uh, thing on Instagram and Facebook, but uh, make sure you follow him. He's really cool. He has a lot of pictures of. If you like this channel, you definitely like, like his stuff. Anyway, David, great question. So one of the um, you know tugboats are are they're specifically built for the tasks that they do. Some of them are anchor laying tugs. Some of them are just ship assist tugs, and some of them are tugs that do just barge work offshore some are the ones that do barge work inshore and some are push boats river boats that sort of things anyway to answer your question the big difference that i notice between ship handling tugs and tugs that do the munker work like we do is that there's no upper house if you see an upper house that's because like for example on the boat that i work on we can't after the barge gets pumped off we can't see out the windows of the lower house because the barge has come up so high so we go up to the upper house and we can see that's not an issue for boats that are just doing ship handling Another thing that's kind of cool about ship handling boats is a lot of them, they want they want maneuverability over everything. So a lot of the newer ones, I'm going to sneeze here. <laughs> Excuse me, not the Corona, it's the pollen, I swear. <laughs> anyway, the newer boats have these things called, they're, they're called tractor tugs. And they have these basically great big like outboard engines that are underneath the boat and instead of, being having propellers like mine that are just fixed in a position and a rudder moves the wash one way or the other, these can actually rotate 360 degrees and change everything about how a tug runs. Um, I have a 
subscriber who's over in uh, in Sweden, and uh, I'm, when this whole Corona thing lifts up, I might go visit him because he and his family own a tugboat company, and he specializes in running these uh, tractor tugs, and he's invited me to come with him and. Maybe I can do some videotaping and have you guys come with us too. But anyway, so the difference is uh, no no upper house. They don't even really need a winch because they usually don't tow. I don't mean a, a winch on the front. I mean a winch on the back. The tractor tugs have winches on the front so they, the deck hand can put up a line and then after that they can do everything right from the one control. And it's usually a smaller, there's, I think there's usually three guys on a tractor tug where there's five guys on our boat. Anyway, our boat is really good at pushing and pulling, and it costs a lot less than having all that extra equipment to buy and maintain. So maneuverability, upper house, winch on the back deck, gear like, you know, push gear and Texas bars and that sort of stuff. Those are the big difference between the two. And it's really true. And it doesn't mean that one can't do another task. It's just that one is set up better for one task than another. Thank you so much for what, uh, for asking the question. And for the rest of you, make sure you get over and check out David's channel. Really, really cool. Captain Tim, I was wondering if you could share your particular career progression and how you ended up in the wheelhouse as a captain. For example, what courses did you take or schools did you go to, et cetera? Thanks. So that was, that was our patron, uh, Ian. Ian asked a great question and, uh, this is something that I, I want to, I'm hoping to do a future video on. I don't know if it's going to be next Tuesday, but possibly if it's not next Tuesday, it'll be the Tuesday after that. I'm still wrestling on what I, what content I'm going to put out next week, but I want to get into a whole, uh, I, you know, when that comes, I'll do a whole, what I call the backstory of how I started out where I was and how I got to where I am now. And so I'll go into that in much bigger detail later, but to answer your question right now, still get that new haircut feel oh it's wonderful <laughs> couldn't stand my hair that long to answer the question uh of how i progress something that makes my progression different than people today is that they didn't have a lot of the regulations in place back when i was coming up that they do today so i didn't have to do a tour uh, uh towing officer assessment and all this sort of stuff i i had a license um i had a license that i picked up a lot of sea time when I was commercial fishing. I got a license when I had a private boat, mainly to try to develop some sort of tax shelter so that I could do charters with my license and hopefully offset some of the cost of boat ownership. And that was a hundred years ago. When I decided to go back to sea, I went and I brought that license with me. I had to get something called a Z card back then, which is the MMC now. And that that was good enough that and being able to pass a drug test was good enough for me to start on deck and so i worked for years on deck and as i got more experience i also went to school there were some things that i did need i needed a radar certificate and the radar thing it's called uh, radar observer unlimited and basically it just means that you can mathematically do on paper what all the new radars do for you now the marpa and arpa radars will figure out your cpa and if you change this much, how much will it affect your CPA and that sort of stuff. And so by taking this course, it just teaches you the trigonometry to figure all that stuff out on paper. That was one course I had to take. Um, I don't know if I had to for this particular job, but I just knew that it would, uh, in, that my employer would look on it favorably. So I went to take the STCW uh, basic safety course, which is a four element course that, has to do with firefighting, first aid, survival, and I think it's called like personal recognizance or something like that, where basically don't get drunk in a foreign country, that sort of thing. Um, I had all that stuff. I may have even got an FCC license, although that wasn't needed because the boat gets licensed in this particular ap application back then. And um, after years on deck, uh, I was lucky enough to have somebody be interested. The company re you know, saw something of value in me because they have to go through great expense to hire me as an extra man and tie me up and expose, me, expose their liability to a newbie like me training. So fortunately, I, you've heard me talk about my Portuguese captain. He took me under his wing and 
I can honestly say that the vast majority of the things I know nautically came from him, and I'll be forever grateful to him. And uh, so that's that's kind of cool. Anyway, that's how that that then then you know after uh, I I got trained, I was a mate for a while, and then after years of being a mate, um, sometimes the company might ask you to work over extra, and so you might work as a captain to fill in. And this is a good time. They're not just going to give you a captain spot. They give you a little kind of a a test run to see how you handle the pressure and how you handle the crew and that sort of thing. So I did that a few times, and uh, I was really happy at the company that I worked for, and it was a it was a good company, but it was also a very small company, and it was it it, it wasn't you know most of the people that I had a lot of respect for in the industry all worked in the what we call the oil patch or the red flag fleet, in other words, you know pushing petroleum. Um, that wasn't something I wanted to get really old and then start doing. I wanted to do it before I got too old. So I figured if I didn't leave the company when I did, I would never leave because, like I say, they were good to me and I was happy there. So I went and I went to a company that seemed like it was really taking off and I had some friends that had moved over and they were really happy there. And uh, I went to that company and that's where I've been ever since. I was there for, you know, I got hired. When you get hired as a mate, they put you through something called an eval period where you have a week or two to go and work with a captain that will evaluate you and say yeah this guy is what he says he is or no he, 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 he we do it you know so it's a it's a evaluation period anyway I was very lucky to have a really good uh, captain Captain Bobby A <laughs> or, or, <laughs> many of people that watch us remember him he recently retired at our company he was a really cool guy anyway I was lucky to have him do my eval and he signed me off and I was a mate for a long time and I enjoyed being a mate. Um, it, it, it was good, but as times change, the company needs you in different capacities. They moved me up to captain, and uh, was captain of one boat, and we did a lot of offshore work with that. And then, uh, then uh, I think we had some layoffs, and they tied that boat up, and they put me on uh, a 3,000. And then after a couple months, they took me off of that, and they put me on a 4,200. And a couple months later, they put me back. Then I came. The rest is history, and I've been there for a long time. So that's how. Oh, wait a minute. I shouldn't have said that. I got to beep that out. I, I came back to the boat that I'm currently on. That's what I should say. All right, very good. Hi, Tim. This is John. I have really been enjoying your videos. However, I have one question that kind, kind of pops up when I see the close ups of your chart plotter and your radar display. It looks like they're oriented as heading up as opposed to north up. And I just wondered, is that a, a company requirement or personal preference? Thank you. Take care. Be safe. Thank you, John. That was a great question. Now look, not all of you are as salty as John is and don't know exactly what he's talking about. And I have to figure out how to explain this. When you look at a chart plotter or a radar, you have a choice of there's usually three choices of how it can be displayed to you. N there's north up, and that's like when you can look at a chart, and what's on top is the north. Bottom is south, and east and west, and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, so there's north up. That means that the, the chart is like this. If you're steering north, you're going like this. If you're steering south, you'll see your icon moving this way. But it, the, the, the chart or your representation of the radar, where the land is, is always north up. That's north up. Then there's also two that are very similar, and that's, that's course up and heads up. A lot of people confuse those two. They're very minor, and I'll get into the differences in them in just a second. But his question was, why do we use one versus the other? Is it mandated by the Coast Guard or a company policy, or is it personal preference? And it's exactly that. It's personal preference. I believe, years ago, I started out only doing north up and I did north up for for just the radar we didn't have chart plotters back then and uh, so that was that was what we did it made sense when you looked at a radar that if the only graphical representation of the land you had other than a radar scope would be a NOAA chart you'd open up the chart and you'd see the contour of the land you'd want your radar to show the contour of the land to match up with what you're looking at the chart all that was great then when chart plotters came along and faster things instead of having Loran, Loran C, and we moved to, to 
you know, a selective availability for the original uh, GPS, and then we went to, to full-on GPS that we have today, and it got so much better, and so the equipment got so much faster that when a, it becomes a lot more intuitive for the average person who hasn't spent their life on water to look at a chart plotter, and it, you know it's going to be it's not going to be a square; it's going to be a rectangle like this. So if you're moving ahead and you start at the bottom, it makes sense that as you look up, that's going to be looking like where you're looking out the window. So a lot of people switch to, to heads up or course up at that point. And that made a lot of sense. It also makes a lot of sense that if you're going 10 knots and somebody is coming at you at 20 knots, you guys are approaching each other at 30 knots, and if you're at the bottom of the screen, you have all that room to see them before they come up to you. Where if you're doing 10 knots and they're doing 20 knots, they're only sneaking up behind you at 10 knots, so their approach is going to be much smaller. So that's that's another reason why you might do that as opposed to uh, as opposed to north up. Another problem that those that aren't familiar with north up will have is you might be north up, but if you're if you're headed, let's see, i got to do this the way you guys look at it. If you're headed east, I think that would be east for you for this way, if I'm looking at this way. If you're headed east, and all of a sudden, you look up and you see a boat that's coming at you right, right here. You want to look to your side. You know, or you, you, if, it's, if it's coming up the chart like this, you almost think you want to look behind you. But it's really on the side of you at that point. All those problems go away when you go with north ups and heads up. And I'm not saying, don't, uh, many people that are familiar with north up get, get accustomed to that and they're cool with that and that's fine. So when things changed, and it changed for me as well, is that we started using... Uh, AIS being interfaced on top of the radar and the chart plotter, we've got a lot of information that's moving, and the more that we can keep it all synced up together, so in other words, we either keep it all on north up or we keep it all on course up or heads up. When we look out the window, we see what we're going. If we if we look straight ahead on the chart, on the what the chart plotter is showing, we look out the window, we want to see the exact same thing. All that will be with heads up and that wasn't available for the old timers because they didn't have a chart plotter that did that they didn't have any chart plotter they had a chart and the chart you'd have to turn upside down to make it work that way so people just left the chart right side up and figured if you were going south you'd be going this way so i hope that makes sense so the different i told you i tell you the difference between course up and heads up and john knows this this is for the people that aren't familiar with this they're almost identical. If you have a course that's going this way and you're going this way, the two course up heads up will look exactly the same. The difference is is if your course might be headed northeast like this. If you're trying to follow if you're trying to follow that course or if you go straight like this, that course will be off that way. As soon as you come over onto that course, it'll lift up for you like that, and it'll go this way. Now, where this becomes really apparent is if you don't have an autopilot, or the conditions are such that the autopilot can't steer very well, or humans don't steer as well as the autopilots traditionally. So if you are on heads up, you'll see the chart. The boat will stay straight. If it's going up, you know, whatever it's going, it's going like this. As the boat moves, a wave pushes it one way or the other, the whole chart will jump. So the boat stays still and the chart wiggles around you. That can get pretty frustrating. So if you have course up and you have a route that's in, the course might be going this way, and what will happen is as the waves hits it, your little icon of the boat wiggles back and forth. So that's why, that's why we use it on our boat. Danny's a young guy, um, so uh, it kind of made sense for him. The people, the guy that was there before him was a young guy. I'm the old guy on the boat. Incidentally, I had to do a video about that someday. It's amazing. I was always the kid on the boat. I was the kid on the boat until one day, overnight, all of a sudden I could be everyone's dad. How does that happen? Came with all these white hairs, too. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that that's why we do it. Uh, it's personal preference. There are many people that still love North Up, and you know what? If you want to 
say who's saltier. The old Northup guys probably are saltier. I don't know that they're navigating better, but they did it because they did it way back in the day. You know, if you can use a sextant, that makes you a real salty guy. Doesn't make you as accurate as anyone with a GPS today. So <laughs> people say, oh, I know how to use a sextant. I can, yeah, good for you. As long as GPS is working, we're so much more accurate and faster and better than the old sextant. So, yeah, there are old ways to do things. Uh, is Northup going to go away? Probably not, because there are people that love it. So that's that. Um, personally, my, my thing, I, li I, I like Course Up. I like Course Up a lot. Anyway, that's it. Um, I, hope this, I hope this video was fun for some of you. I hope maybe it might inspire some of you that if you want to get on board that you come over and check out our Patreon page. It starts out for as little as $2 a month you can pledge. You can do whatever you want. And if you don't want to do that, I'm just happy with you guys watching the videos too. So thank you so much. Anyway, stay safe. See you next Tuesday.